Well, hello, friends. Today, we are going to optimize something because I've been getting a little bit annoyed with the system system monitor program that it takes a while to launch. Um, like that. It's crazy slow. And it's, it's way, way worse if I'm also like compiling something at the same time, which is often um, like the kind of situation where I might want to bring up the system monitor. Because compilation is, is dog slow, and, and it's, um, it's something that, that it's going to take time to fix because we need a lot of fixes. But as you can see there, like it took just for freaking ever to bring it up. And I think uh, one of the main reasons that it takes so long to bring up is that we um, construct all of these different sub views or uh, tabs here on startup before we show anything on screen. And I think that that significantly delays um, showing anything on screen. So I'm going to uh, basically optimize this app's startup time by making these lazy so that we don't actually load anything until the first time you click on them. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. So someone asked uh, why I don't uh, maximize my IDE. So today we're maximizing Cube Creator. Let's see how that feels. Um, system monitor main. All right, so the way that this UI is laid out is everything is in this tab widget here. And here's the processes. And um, what else do we have? Uh, graphs, and then Here's the file systems, PCI devices, devices. So I know that the PCI devices is particularly heavy to start up because it has to load the PCI IDs database, which is like this big file that contains all the, um, all the known PCI IDs, like vendor ID and product ID mapped to a name so that we can show like, this is an Intel graphics card or whatever, instead of just the numbers. Mm. So, making this lazy is definitely going to be helpful. So maybe we can start with that one, actually. So currently, we just add a widget to the tab widget, like build PCI devices tab. And what this does is that it returns a widget. And then that widget um, is constructed here with all of the um, contents of it. So maybe we'll invent sort of a lazy widget here. Um, let's try that. So we can still return a widget so that we can add it to the um, tab widget, but the widget that we give it is going to be like empty until you actually add, open it. So let's create something like that. Call it lazy widget, maybe. Um, let's say that it's final. And how is this thing going to work? Well, first thing is we need to be able to construct it and destroy it. Lazy widget. That can just be empty. And we need a parent. Um, Okay, and then I think, what if we just... Um, what if we just have a callback? So he, here we would say something like um, lazy widget construct, and then PCI widget on first show, something like this. Um, I'll first show something like this. And then maybe the, it will be past the um, self like that. Um, 
and see how this would turn out. And then we would just, instead of calling it PCI widget, we would just call it self. Okay. No matching constructor. Da, 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 da. Wait, why doesn't it like that? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah because I have to have a default argument. Okay. <clears throat> then we need to have some kind of um, laser widget. Can be like that actually. It should be an amp so that we can do self dot for that slightly nicer touch. Okay, and um. Then you'll set one of those up, and but how do we make it react? So we'll have something like a virtual void show. Oh, we have a show event. Okay, cool. I was worried that I didn't have anything like a show event. So I don't remember ever using it. If we get a show event, what the heck is a show event? Show event. Wait, okay, nobody ever makes this. <gasps> mm, okay, so nobody ever makes this event, so we have to construct one somewhere and give it to us so that we get this. I guess we want to find out when it becomes visible the first time. So, Let's go look in set visible, I guess. G widget set visible. Um, so I guess if a widget becomes visible, then we can give it the show event. And if it becomes non-visible, we can give it a hide event. I think that's fair. So let's say that if M visible, um, then we'll make an event, G show event. Um, event, event. Oh, that's a, gonna clash. Um, yeah, hide event. It's kind of weird, but I think maybe that's all that we need to be doing here. <clears throat> and then I feel like this would just work, but <laughs> let's see. Oh, and I actually didn't do anything in the override. So um, let's keep, keep track of if we has been shown false. If we've been shown, return. Um, otherwise, has been shown is true now. And then on first show. Um, okay. Oh, we should pass this. I, I love it when I realize I made a mistake and I'm able to fix it and save before the <laughs> before the build process gets to that file. It's pleasant. Hmm. Okay, so let's see if this starts up any faster. I feel like it did. But let's see if we can go here and uh, oh, it did work and it took a moment to load. So the delay was there instead. It's kind of interesting. Uh, 
So let's see that again, actually. So it loads up pretty fast, and then when you click here, yeah. Okay, interesting. Well, it's it's definitely an improvement. So let's take this lazy widget concept and um, for now we'll keep it in this file, but we can use it for more stuff. So let's do it for the file systems tab. Um, <clears throat> Let me just say lazy widget. I mean, this thing is actually really useful, so I'm just going to call it glazy widget right away because <laughs> I know that I'm going to want to put this in libgui. Um, bam, 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 glazy widget. Okay. Um, auto self. It's fine. Okay, and then FS widget on first show. Man, this mechanism is so cool. I, I really like it. And then all we have to do here is say self dot instead. Um, self. That's all of those. And then what else did we have? The devices tab. Yeah, let's make that one lazy too. G lazy widget. Mm -mm. Ah. Keep mistyping, adding a curly brace there out of some weird ingrained habit. Okay, so now we're getting pretty lazy here. Let's see if it feels more responsive already. There's still the, um, a graph widget that has like this little uh, CPU and memory graphs. We could do that one lazily as well. It just, it doesn't, it's not built by a convenient function yet. Oh, and there's also the network statistics widget, which is a separate class because it has a bunch of state. Um, I think we could make this lazy too. It, it would, because it has all the state, then we need to do like custom laziness, but we can still do that. So let's just look at this first and see. System monitor, boom. Okay, that's pretty fast. Still not, that's very slow. This one comes up pretty quick. Um, let's just make everything lazy. So, uh, in the network statistics widget, let's get the show event. To show event. Okay. And in the show event, we'll do all of this stuff right here. So we'll delay all of it until we get the show event. We can actually keep it up here. <laughs> Just because it's kind of logically part of construction, but at the same time, it's not. Um, da, 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 da. Actually, actually, it would be also kind of interesting if we just did on first show and then inherited from lazy widget. It's a little bit, it's a little bit weird, but then we could actually capture this and ignore the param and then um, That's not terrible. Okay, and then let's let's take lazy widget and put it to look GUI. GUI G lazy widget H um and CPP. Let's put that down here. 
Okay, and um, lazy witch. There we go. Let me just grab this guy and include him instead. Lazy. I I love this class right now. It's so neat. Uh, and then we're just gonna move some of this gunk out of line. So we'll do them. G widget and um, ba -ba -ba. and this will be the show event. So. Lazy widget. And like that. And yeah, we'll assert that you have on for a show set, because if you don't, then it'll be weird. Like, part of me feels like this could be virtual instead, but then we lose the, um, the convenient way of doing it in the um, system monitor that we can just like create a lazy widget and set this and we don't have to subclass to be able to do this so I like having this callback although subclassing would be nice as well hmm. but let's pick one or the other so I'm picking this one for convenience right now um, okay I guess that's the whole thing though Then in that statistics widget, we gotta inherit from uh, Jalazy widget. So I'll just put that there. Oh, and it was final. This can't be final anymore. Oh, wait, what the heck? I don't know, sometimes my computer hangs lately. Uh, I don't know what happens to the video. Like, maybe I'm just sitting here waiting or. Maybe I freeze, who knows. Uh, but creator just gets really, really busy looking something up and it locks the machine. Yet I keep postponing upgrading my machine. Who knows how long I will keep postponing this. Uh, why am I here? Removing final, right. Okay. Make all. So I think that um, we'll put the network statistics widget in a good place. Then let's do the graphs. So the like these are in these neat build helper functions here because I realized that that's I think should be done and these were made before that. So let's just put them in a helper function. Um, where's the graph thing? Uh, graphs container. That's the one I want. This one. Okay, so here we'll say build graphs tab. And then these will do boom. It will say static ref putter g widget build uh, graphs tab. And oops. Actually, it should be nominal ref putter. I don't know why it's a ref putter. It's a mistake. Because these things are never going to fail. Uh, graphs tab. Graphs container. All right, phone is buzzing, but it's okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Build graphs tab. You're going to be a lazy widget, and then grass container on first show is auto self. And ooh, ooh, um, okay. Self and self. There we go. That is very nice. This warning, I, I really don't care about that warning. Go away. 
Bom. Um, it's like it's telling me that other compilers might not optimize this, but I'm fine with that. Process table view is not captured. Oh. And where are we trying to use that? Uh, made a mess, haven't I? Network statistics widget. Okay, okay. First off, lazy widget has to have a protective constructor so that we can actually subclass it properly, because otherwise it gets tricky if the, you want to subclass something that has private constructor only. So that was not perfect. And then what else? What's the problem? Redefinition. Ooh, glazy widget. We forgot the pragma once. What a silly mistake. System monitor. And then CPU graph not declared. Okay, so process table view. Oh. Mmm. These kind of reach and grab into each other. Um, memory stats widget. Where does that even go? Memory stats widget. Wait. Memory stats. Oh, it goes in the graphs container, right. So we're just in the wrong place here. Um, let's see, so this one goes here. Goes in self. And let's see. Then CPU graph. Um, okay, I'm just going to be a little bit lazy and do something like this. Because then we'll, I'm going to just add a, a getter for it so that we can find it. Um, something like, um, let me put this down here so that you don't construct it. Um, uh, and uh, let me put that out of line. Um, search that it doesn't exist. As thought is this okay? And then we just make a getter for it. So stats widget the return as the assert as the. Okay, now we can get to it from anywhere. Now, oh, we can't, still can't get to the CPU graph though. Mm, we need to get to the CPU graph in the process table view because constructing it with a graph widget and then graph is that. We create the process model with the graph. And the process model also has a graph. This is so hacked up and spaghetti-ish. It's a little gross, but uh, basically to avoid doing the same work twice, then the process table that has all the list of processes, it also um, tells the graph like how much CPU is being used right now so that um, we don't have to like fetch that information twice since we already have it here and we've already computed all the CPU percentages and stuff and we just give it to the graph even though this is pretty gross um, gross factoring um, man uh, I guess we can uh, well we're not going to have the graph widget at this point so we're going to have to live without that and instead um, we're going to have to look it up and graph dot. We're using that. 
here we're gonna have to say something like um oh man how do we, how do we find it uh, process model update um uh, how about we make an on update thing so on um, cpu on updated on, oh there's an already an update okay let's make a custom one so that we can say on um, total on CPU um, on new CPU data point total CPU percent. Okay. And then what will that allow us to do? Um, that means that, hold on, let me just add that function here so we can um, on your CPU data point. Uh, da, 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 da. New process model. Um, Okay, and then where do we create this process table view? Oh, right, it doesn't take a graph widget anymore. Explicit, no pattern. Um, okay, and then now we just need to be how do we get the process model out of this thing? Process model is hidden here, so we're gonna need to. Um, okay, I'm gonna be lazy again and just expose it with a global getter because there's only one process model in this program anyway. So. Um, oh, no, no, no. Just like that. Uh, assert. There is no the, and then the is this, and okay, and we don't have a graph. So now, when we create the CPU graph, we should be able to say process model the, I'm going to include it. Um, process model the dot on new CPU data point. Um, float. Actually, um, and capture um, self. Um, wait, no, how do we want to do this? Just a moment here. I'm gonna capture CPU percent. And I've long since lost whatever I wanted to paste, so CPU graph. There's something that you call on these. Add value, right? CPU percent. Uh, but I have to capture that. Uh, I guess I can just capture it like this. Okay, what did I forget? I'm terribly sorry. And const graph widget add value. Wait, what? Why is it const? Oh, because I'm making a copy. Oh shit. Um, what if I do something like? Um, and capture it by 
then I'm capturing a pointer to it, right? CPU graph is not captured. Right, yeah, because it's called graph. Okay. No member named add value. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's so ugly. I don't want to write it that way. Network statistics widget. Oh. We don't need the show event. Um, this is so freaking ugly, but let's just see if it works. Because now everything should be lazy. Oof. Um, of course, the process table view is like the first thing that shows up, and that thing can't be lazy because it's going to show up right away. I mean, I guess we could make it lazy, but there's no point. System monitor. Boom. Ah. <laughs> Why don't you love me? Um, we're trying to call process model update on something. Where is it? It's this thing that I added here. Yeah, right. We haven't set up a callback yet. That's OK, because we don't set this callback up until we actually instantiate the graphs uh, view, the graphs tab. So this might be null here. Can't be calling it. It's good to have assertions. Uh, okay, well, that was good until we immediately died. In memory stats, which is the because we are here. Wait, no, no, no. Where is that? Oh, we're in the main uh, memory stats widget. The so there might not be a memory stats widget yet. Oh, that's kind of funny. So this shouldn't actually return a reference, and it shouldn't assert. Uh, it should return a pointer because it might not be there. So, then we do it that way. Oops. Shouldn't be referenced the pointer even. And then we'll do this. Ah, if auto memory stats widget is memory stats widget the. Memory stats widget refresh. Okay. This is the periodic update refresh whatever timer that updates the, the graphs and also updates the process table. Runs every second by default, although there is a menu where you can change it here. We have some other speeds if you like, or frequencies. All right, so. Okay, all right, all right, it's pretty snappy. Let's go here. Mm, this does not look very good. This one is totally screwed. This one looks alright. These launch okay. No weirdness, but this one is weird. The CPU usage is not working. Okay. On new CPU data point thingy. Um. So what, the, what was that doing before? Add value. Maybe I'm just messing it up. Add value total CPU percent. I'm just doing it what it was doing before. Um, can I do this? Instead, that might be cleaner actually. So, uh, it was really tripping me up the way that I was capturing that thing because it's weird here because we're in a we're in a lambda already and I want to capture 
into a nested lambda and what I'm capturing here is a non-null ref coder but I know that it's never gonna go away maybe the thing is I should be capturing a copy of a non-null ref coder um, ba -ba -bum. oh okay well now at least the values are coming out okay I feel like it didn't look right at first. What if I tap on this? Oh, wait. Does it only start... once it's visible? Oh, right, yeah, we're not accumulating the information until the first time we open it. But that's okay, right? So like it's not until I actually click on graphs that it will start creating the graph. Yeah, okay, that's clearly okay. Because um, that's the whole point of being lazy is that we don't we don't do that normally. So I wonder how this will fare if we do um, compile and then try to bring it up. It is very slow. But uh, anecdotally, I feel like it is launching faster. <laughs> uh, this could definitely be better, but um, still, still, big improvement. Um, some of the factoring is a little bit crappy, but I'm going to tolerate it because it's just contained in the System Monitor app anyway, and it doesn't have to be perfect right now. So what did we do in G widget? Oh yeah, we're adding show event and hide event. Those are gonna come in handy. So let's, oh frick. G widget, um, dispatch, G show event, show, oops, show and hide events when uh, widget visibility changes. And then we had the um, G lazy widget. We'll say um, loop GUI add G lazy widget a helpful helper convenience for the lazily built UIs. Um, uh, da, 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 uh, lazy widget will not will not touch that. Um, to here's here's um, uh, why is it so difficult? Here's how you can use this to speed up um speed up um startup time. Be lazy widget auto uh, widget. Let's just construct. Um, widget on first show auto self self set act self uh, blah blah blah. Basically, um, it will uh, uh, it allows you to delay building the rest of the uh, building the widget um, subtree until it's shown for the first time. Okay. And then we're just going to bulk commit these system monitor changes without too much thinking because, because that's how I feel right now. <laughs> They're a little bit skunky, let's be honest. Just um, reaching and grabbing that global singleton getters. It's okay, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. We can do this sometimes. Mm. So, um, make, um, 
all tabs except uh, except 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 um, process table load laser lazily loaded um, now use to be lazy widget for all um, secondary tabs which makes them whole uh, 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 which makes them pro uh, start up way faster than before there's a noticeable delay when you click on the PC devices tab for the first time, but that's definitely better than always eating that delay uh, before seeing a window at all. Cool. All right. That's pretty good. So let's just see that one more time. System monitor. Okay, I am pressing enter. Boom. Okay. I like it. Um, we can definitely do better, but it's a huge improvement from what I'm used to seeing here. So I'm happy with that. Um, there's that delay. Boop. Um, yeah. Awesome. So I think that's going to be it for today's video. So if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for coming back and hanging out. Um, and I hope you saw something interesting, as always. And uh, what else? I'll see you next time. Bye.